Future of Data podcast. In this episode, we'll talk to Peter Morgan around AI, machine learning, and deep learning. So stay tuned. So welcome everyone to Future of Data podcast. Today we we have with us Peter Morgan. He is with Deep Learning Partnerships um, uh, along the line of one of the very crucial area, artificial intelligence. We would learn today some of the fun stuff, what the AI is, what deep learning is. And um, Peter, thank you so much. Uh, I truly appreciate uh, you stepping up and, and, and helping and helping our audience understand uh, what right. deep learning is, what AI is. So why yeah. don't we start with your introduction? Uh, uh-huh. I, I saw that you have a physics uh, major and in, 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 uh, so you have a scientist from physics background. What are you doing in AI? So love to know that journey. Yeah, that's good. That's a good journey to <laughs> describe, try to describe, right? Uh, <laughs> connected thoughts. So I did start my uh, life as, you know, and very interested in science. It was curiosity, I guess, and how things work. Uh, and I guess that's carried on into AI. Uh, you know, how does the brain work, right? <laughs> how does intelligence work? So yeah. in that underlying sense, I think I'm not doing anything different, really. I'm just exploring stuff that I like to explore. I've been lucky in life in that way. I've just kept exploring where my passion's taking me. And my passion is taking me definitely into AI today. And I have been working in it for four years. Uh, but yeah, just to go back, I did do a, um, I was working on a PhD in physics at University of Massachusetts uh, at Amherst and um, here in particular theoretical particle physics. So a lot of math, right? So that helps me actually in AI because, you know, it, it's quite mathematical, um, you know, there's two types of AI, just like uh, any any subject. There's theoretical AI, and it is is practical. Let's build it AI, okay? So, you know, I am interested in the theoretical underpinnings of you know how, how it all works. So, yeah, you know, mathematically, it's good. I, I can do do the math essentially uh, because of my strong physics background, physics and math. Um, but yeah, businesses want to apply this stuff too, and I do have a consulting company which you mentioned, Deep Learning Partnership. Uh, so yeah, the, the hands-on is something as well. That's the other side that I need to be able to, you know, bring to the table. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, thank you for the quick introduction. So uh, I think one of the one of um, a good friend of ours. Uh, he, so he suggested that if you want the best data scientist, mm. look for particle physicist, because they pretty much spend their time looking for the the tiny tiny sort of beep, tiny sort of that that hiccups. Yeah. So that's that's where most of the anomalies are, and and you want sort of uh, professionals who are very focused on in finding those sort of anomalies because that's yeah. where that's where the, the big big opportunities are. Yeah, I think so, and it's such a new field developing rapidly. There's a lot of stuff still to be discovered, actually. So yeah, it is nice, nice area to be in. Nice. So so tell tell me about uh, deep learning. Like what what do you guys do uh, uh, yeah. from from the tenant of it? Like what? Do, yeah, love to know what deep learning yeah. partnership is all about. Yeah, so that's a company I, I founded actually about 18 months ago uh, in London. I've just been over to the US. Uh, so I'm a consulting company and I hire people in as and when you know we, we get engagement. So most recently I've been helping to develop a uh, AI bootcamp, deep learning bootcamp in, in New York City. Um, and it was the first of its kind in the world. So there's a lot of data science boot camps, which I actually helped out one here in London develop as well. So this is taking it to the next stage, which is, you know, AI uh, boot camp, deep learning. And already there we're seeing our competitors, other data science companies starting to offer, you know, eight week, 12 week deep learning uh, courses. So we're, 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 we're nicely ahead of the curve. You know, I can, uh, you know, um, so I can kind of, you know, feel feel a little bit happy that, you know, I predicted something that looks like it will happen, you know. So, um, and then we're also doing consulting engagement into companies as well, uh, like bank, banking, uh, retail, healthcare. So that's yeah. So it's a it's a young company, you know. When work comes along, you know, I try to try to accept it and bring people on board to to help me if we need extra people. So, but in general, the market itself is big and getting bigger exponentially. So I think we're well placed to, you know, continue training and consulting in this marketplace, deep learning. 
Interesting. So um, I have a question, definitely. So why deep learning particularly? So there, the machine learning has a lot of other uh, areas. What brings you to deep learning? That's a good question, Vishal. So uh, deep learning really is uh, state of the art, and it's the one that's outperforming the other algorithms. We, I, I might even call it good old fashioned AI, machine learning. And um, you know, machine learning included you know, random forests, all the Kaggle winners, mm. uh, support vector machines, just throwing out some technical jargon here, um, you know, names of algorithms, well-known algorithms that have been very successful for the last, you know, 30 years or, or even more some, in some cases. So why deep learning and why now? So uh, these algorithms have been around since the 70s and maybe even earlier, some of the uh, rudimentary ones, 50s even, uh, even 40s, I think, um, you know, McCulloch and Pitts wrote down, you know, how an artificial neural, how an, the mathematics behind how a neuron works, right? And so these are artificial neural networks, so it's the same math. So uh, why now? You know, well, basically it's a hardware and data play. So the hardware, we have all the NVIDIA GPUs uh, with 8,000 cores, etc. cetera, 100 teraflops. You can buy a server, put it under your desk, 100 teraflops. That used to be a supercomputer 10 years ago. So we have right. the hardware. Now we have the hardware. So now we can throw the data. At. We also have the big data sets. So we have ImageNet and other million or more greater labeled data sets. So we, we have the data, we have the hardware. We've always had the algorithm. So we're just putting all three together in the perfect storm. And, and it turns out that neural networks outperform all the other algorithms. And why is that? Well, there's something called the universal approximation theorem, which says that uh, a, 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 multi, uh, a single layer uh, neural network um, can approximate any function to any degree of accuracy. Now, now that, that, that's a very, very powerful statement and it, it is provable and it was proven in the 80s by a couple of different teams. And so that's why, okay, that may sound a little technical, but basically nature's had 4.5 billion years to try, try everything, right? And mm -hmm. biology and the laws of physics are such that, you know, and the universal approximation theorem uh, is the mathematical, you know, statement behind it all says here's the most efficient and effective way of processing information because at the end of the day this is all about processing information isn't it whether it's business information science information or any type of you know uh, facebook information social media any type of information it just turns out that neural networks are the most accurate and efficient way of doing that and biology is clever right it's tried everything trial and error it's had failures it's had successes we've had einstein we've had people who aren't clever criminals etc but ultimately neural networks are the you know the most effective way of information processing information and, and that's deep and very fundamental and I, I don't hear many people talking about it in fact but really that that should be the starting point for any discussion I think that's that's a, that's definitely an, uh, a very interesting perspective I've been I've been a, a big fan of neural networks at least from my graduation days yeah. so I've, I've not heard uh, about it since then but yeah I think that um, mm -hmm. you, I, I have another friend in um, in neural network space for me so Let's talk about deep learning. So what, like for our audience, uh, if you can shed some light on what is deep learning? Yeah, so it's basically um, artif another name for artificial neural networks, okay? And it, I like it because it's it's easier to say than artificial neural networks. So, you know, it's... Uh, so the deep part just means it's more than one layer. So, um, you know, you two, two plus a hundred, a thousand layers, that's the deep part. You have many, many hidden layers in your neural network. You have an input layer and an output layer, and then one or more in, in the middle. And if it's more than one layer, remember the universal approximation theorem says you only need one layer, but mm -hmm. uh, the, the more layers you have, you know, the quicker it will converge. So. Um, and there's a lot of trade-off. No one knows exactly the right configuration for any particular data set. So there's a, this is where all the uh, room for uh, success, really, in, in scientifically and in business uh, lies. That's a great opportunity right there. That's a challenge, but also an opportunity uh, for businesses if they can come up with a neural network architecture, the number of layers and the number of nodes in each layer, that is more ideal than, than your competitor. Then you're going to be able to process your data quicker and more accurately. And that's your competitive edge right there. This field is changing very quickly. There's a lot of teams on this right now in science and in industry like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Baidu, IBM. Um, so um, every day papers are coming out on archive. You know, it's very exciting for me as a scientist, actually, yeah, and business as well. It's moving very rapidly. Interesting. 
interesting and so so i think so let's talk about um, one of the use case so if you can sort of make it very very sort of simple down to maybe for a 5 year old level right mm-hmm. so what is deep learning um, as seen by say a typical use case so to help help uh, me and our, our our audience understand what is deep learning that will be sure. really helpful sure so we can split it into two things one is image processing and one is uh, language processing if you like so if our data set consists of images um then we would use something called cnns or convolutional neural networks and the other type of neural networks is called rnns or recurrent neural networks they're used to process uh, language information whether that's speech or text okay in fact any time series whereas video stream market data text or speech rnn so rnns are perhaps the um more complicated because they're having to deal with the time series element they have an extra mm-hmm. time element uh, cnns are uh pretty much a solved um technology if you like could they get their processing pixels and stationary images so wh- whatever use case you can think uh, for a company who wants to develop and get value out of uh processing images or processing text uh speech market data now that that's any company in any vertical it's basically unlimited right so any use case you can think of i mentioned market data so algorithmic traders on wall street are now using neural networks to you know get the, get the high frequency trading uh advantage uh healthcare is is a great one for me because it's saving lives and curing cancer and helping us to live longer and better quality lives so if for example radiology uh, uh fmri scans x-ray scans these are images right and so you have a thousand images you can or a million you can scan these very quickly using cnns okay and that 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 they can now do that more accurately and faster than any human radiologist who get paid 4 500,000 a year and so obviously you know uh, hospitals are you know that so there's a lot of jobs in danger right now we talk about technological unemployment and these are high you know white collar jobs too not just robots and factory jobs but yeah so that society issue isn't it it's it's we're getting away from technology but it, it, it this has a great social and political and economic um ramifications that the fact that these neural networks are going to replace uh the our, our neural networks <laughs> yeah no i think that's that's well said and in in fact i was uh, i was having a conversation with one of the i think i think he was uh, one of the executive friend uh, and and we had this conversation on that uh i was reading an article that the easiest job to replace by an ai is ceos yeah. so so that's like it's true so yeah so i think that's why and 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 they are the they are the one who are, who are paid the most in this equation so yeah definitely um i can see uh, that it's it, 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 it's it's funny how will how will and when will sort of i i i'll have an ai boss in fact in fact i do like in in my company there's a something called tau Uh, it, it, it's a talent um, it's it's an ai around um, career mm-hmm. coaching so uh-huh. it so tau is is in a way my boss so yeah. i'm kind of so i think it will be it will be a fun drive to see how cool. creepy or how cool that boss is um, yeah exactly so and then it brings up so what are we going to do now that we're displaced for the first time in history right we've had blue collar displacement through the industrial revolution and pcs right but now it's really we're going to be able to replace everybody now including white collar CEOs lawyers doctors uh everybody will be replaced eventually okay uh and it's happening now so what how how are we going to eat and live and survive okay so people are talking about a universal basic income where where the wealth is distributed because the wealth has been concentrated more and more in a few right google's the facebook's etc and so uh before you used to have IBM and AT&T with a million 2 million employees and so they were big companies but that's the wealth was distributed amongst a lot of people now facebook um can kind of have 20,000 employees and be bigger than AT&T and IBM combined okay. and so you know it really is the inequality is more than it ever has been in history and moving quicker and quicker so yeah universal basic income is is kind of, which is basically another word for taxation and tax the rich and everything else and that really is and that's that's a scary slope I, i i yeah yeah but it, it's something we have to face as a as humanity right we we do have to and and it's better to hit, face it head on now than wait you know until it's kind of everybody's starving and <laughs> in the street and pitch. no i think that's that's a that's a very valid point and and and, and um um uh, i'll i'll again i i think i'll 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 be pulling uh, pushing my shameless plug here but i think one of the thing that 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 got us started uh, in ai was the very fact that almost every ai is talking about uh, uh, sort of sh- uh, slight shifting jobs 
mm. or taking away jobs but there's no ai to actually help save it right mm. so there's there's a so i think where we are banking on is primarily there's a there's a very broad area emerging mm-hmm. in which what if i am an ai and i can help you stay employed so if suppose i'm seeing a new trend uh, and one of the typical use cases that, that 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 we give out is that um, say an example of an, an autonomous uh, car phenomena takes a truck driver's job away right so what if in uh, we have a network of lot of truck drivers and we see one of one of or couple of those guys actually started doing something called traffic analytics mm. so suddenly sort of we the network can propagate and say hey guys why don't we all have a secondary or 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 a tertiary career options and and pretty much like that this ai is anyways it's 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 your assistant mm-hmm. it keeps grooming you it keeps giving sort of these alternate career options yeah so that okay. we'll because i think the whole point of, of tech displacement dis- displacement is so we can free up our time here so we can yep. focus somewhere else nice exactly yeah right. so we got a question you know what what is our purpose what gives us meaning right and so for a lot of people right. getting up in the morning going to work and that's fine too but that really won't be there for much longer so i i'm a real optimist here and that we 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 will find meaning very easily it's not something we should worry about oh my god we'll never have meaning without work I right right replace that with something out as long as the you know we we can eat and and have a roof over our heads and have an internet connection wi-fi right basic human right these days uh we'll yes. be we'll be good uh it just it's a different world we, we will get used to it. but we've had four shifts already we've had farming we've had the industrial revolution we've had the pc and now the ai and we we've always moved 98% of right. people used to work in farms now it's one less than a 2% okay everything's automated on farms so and we've we've moved comfortably into industrial factories and then we've moved uh comfortably into uh basically PCs and you know cubicles and now we're actually going to be free it's almost like we're taking the chains off you know we we right. we to do what we want for me that that that's that's great as long as is enough that we can eat nobody gets left behind that you know so i think that's that's a, that's that's a very noble thought yeah. so now let's talk about businesses right so yeah. <clears throat> let's 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 sort of uh, try to understand their problem if i say i'm a small business mm. why would i care about something called ai or why would i care about something called mm. machine learning yeah. what are some of those some of those pitches pitch to those those uh, businesses who have anyways no technical know how and they've been sort of getting this anxious about this emerging keyword and jobs getting lost and all that yeah. phenomena yeah so yeah you know slightly flippant is because google are using it in all of their products and they're the second largest company in the world uh so yeah it works okay now that that's it that's the bottom line okay um facebook too and all the major tech company baidu ibm microsoft they're all using it they're all just replacing everything all their algorithms and neural networks okay so if you're not sold on that you might say okay well that's okay for the big guys with all the tech but it's it's not that because they're using it in every product imaginable hr um search um just everything okay so these big tech companies even though they're tech companies they have the same uh functional units as any company right they have hr they have legal they have accounting they have all of these other departments okay so that's one argument the second argument is like okay so what do you guys do what your core competence core competence uh okay you're in healthcare okay you're you're a legal company uh you're retail etc okay um here's how neural networks are not not can be but are being used by other legal companies right now and and medical companies and retail companies like amazon for example here's how like jeff bezos 3 weeks ago had an interview where he said you know neural networks ai deep learning you know he actually mentioned those words he, you know just straight to the point we're using them in everything now it's really is our driver our key driver at amazon is deep learning now so amazon alexa amazon echo you mentioned these digital assistants right well that's the natural language processing i talked about rnn so we're all going to have one it, we kind of have them now siri cortana google now um but they'll just get better and better the more uh data they're trained on okay they're like us as human beings um mm. when we're young we get trained alphabets and numbers and how to do math and how to how grammar works okay these things uh, are capable of learning and getting trained the more data we give to them whether it's medical data our own data per se they help us or or if I'm a healthcare or or a retail company but the more data I can feed into it either from external sources or internal the more it can help the better it can, job it can do at helping us so 
I don't know if that's answered your question. I've kept it very general rather than do a very specific use case. But there, there are, right. for example, in the legal industry, there are companies now who use uh, neural networks, deep learning as paralegals. They basically uh, quickly scan all the documents much quicker than any young 20-year-old paralegal can and uh, more accurately too. So th there's an example. So the natural language processing, uh, the technology is at the point where they can understand. It's actually natural language understanding, written text. So any company that uses people to read and process and make decisions, I mentioned a legal one, can basically replace that process, human being, with these neural networks okay so, so, scary. This, so, so, so your your sales pitches to these businesses is that everyone is using it and it's 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 actually making it showing some real impact in in, in the economic structure of the businesses mm. and almost all the verticals as you're saying uh, are seeing an impact or, or at least the incentive of, of going in this direction uh, so so you should you should uh, try it out too yeah, yeah, but not say that's more of a leap of faith, right? It's work, It's more like, uh, and here's how. Here's how these legal companies are using it. Here's how Cisco are using it. Here's how Amazon are using it. In real use cases, because this information is public information. The actual um, nitty-gritty fine points aren't, because that's their competitive advantage. But the general way, the use cases are definitely, I could Google now, you could too. Anybody can, all the listeners, uh, Google uh, neural networks, legal applications and it, there'd be a hundred examples of companies how they're using it okay it's not a secret right interesting interesting so mm. now now let's talk about i think um I'll, I'll i'll go slightly on 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 the technical aspect of of uh, deep learning and ai yeah i think one of the one of the um, so-called drawbacks or one of the um, red herring in, in using these capabilities is analysis paralysis right creating the boundaries on like where does it really end when should the learning begins and where, where should the learning stops yeah. so what are some of your thoughts around those challenges uh, yeah. for, for businesses like so if i let my ai like in, in, in a deep learning case mm -hmm. if I, if it can create say multiple multiple neural network nodes layers so then it can actually it can extrapolate and and it can sort of dig deeper than it should and it can it can connect two sort of non-related dots because somehow we are all connected, but but not really from the business sense point of view. So how would you like? What are some of your thoughts in that in that direction, if at all? Yeah, so that's a good question. It's an ongoing area of development. Um, so you know, how can I? Who's to say that this hundred layer neural network with a, a million uh, nodes at each layer? Okay, so that's a hundred million nodes, which a GPU these days can easily handle. Okay, ten years ago it would have been, my God, that's going to take us a week to to feed out a million images or whatever text into it. Today, that can be done in half an hour using a new new hardware. So that's the hardware is not an issue. But so how do I know if it's 99 layers or 101 layers or 100 layers, right? And that's the fair question. And how do I know if it's a million nodes or two million right. layer, right? We're not really constrained by layers or nodes anymore. We the hardware is good, good to go. Uh, so that is, there's still a little bit, it's more of an art than a science still. There's a little bit of, you know, magic in there, a little trial and error, not really magic, but trial and error for sure. Uh, the, you know, the guys at Google, they, they can't give you an answer, right? The guys who write the scientific yeah. paper, they've done a lot of exploration that, you know, we haven't, but they still, it's, it's well, you know, here's, here's, here's what we got by trying different, it's an empirical science. It, at the moment okay the, the underlying theory isn't solved completely yet okay that's that's the exciting part for me actually <laughs> right yes. uh, interesting interesting so um thank you so much uh, for for shedding setting your thoughts on on that mm. so now let's talk about again get back to that that business thingy right so i'm a business uh, so you, you told me that hey everyone is doing it you should do it too there's there are some real numbers real impact mm. sure i'm sold so now what are some of the first three steps that you would suggest to a small business that has no freaking clue yeah. what that what AI even means, let alone using it in their business? Sure, so sure. What are some of the things that you can say, hey, maybe do these three things mm -hmm, okay. to get yourself sane or something? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, education is important. You know, here's what a, here's what a neural, here's what a, a, a deep learning network, AI network, here, here's what machine learning means you know here's why we are here today here's why companies are using it and here's where we are you know honestly state of the art um 
and here's some examples of how Google have used it or somebody, you know, if they're a law firm, here's some examples of how, you know, your competitors are using it now and really uh, impacting them, you know, not, not just they're trying it out, let's see how they go, really getting results and have been for the last two or three years, okay? This stuff hasn't just happened today, it's been around a while. So probably five years ago, they call it the Big Bang, really. So um, it's been around, it's not just starting today. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not a mature industry, but there there's people who have had these stuff uh, for a good three years, right? So that's not new, they, 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 they use it today, right? the bottom line so so, so, so you're saying uh, so education is number one that that you said like educate yourself what are what are the other two things that a, a small business could yeah. do yeah to get yeah. good yeah so that's education that's number one that's good and so number two probably then obviously it's it's the same process so new technology same processes some things don't change proof of concept right Let, let's have a little trial let's put a uh, let's run it on a small cluster, one computer, a small cluster on your laptop, something, and feed this data set in, this small data set, you know, a subset of your larger data set, if it's a legal company, let's just feed it a thousand documents, not not a, a million, right, and on your laptop with this neural network. It could be uh, off the shelf open source, okay, a lot of this stuff's open source, which is accelerating it, so it could be TensorFlow, okay, it could be MXNet, it could be CNTK. Uh, and that's the Google, Amazon, and Microsoft versions in in that order. Facebook used Torch. Okay, so let's as as a consultant, I should know which one probably is the better choice for your data set. Actually, that that's the value add I would I would add. Okay, rather than trying them all one at a time, I could say actually, well, you know, TensorFlow is probably better choice than CNTK or vice versa, and here's why. Okay, so that that will save you time and money, but that's a proof of concept. And if it, if it helps, if it works, if you're convinced um, uh, at the results of a small data set running on a, on a small piece of hardware, then we could scale it up. Let's put all your data in and let's use a cluster, right? Uh, cluster computing, uh, you know, not, not, not necessarily Hadoop, but the whole, you know, distributed processing um, cluster cluster computing let's run it on the cloud let's run it on amazon if you're if you're happy with that or or, or else in your own data center so let's scale it up now from one to a hundred nodes okay and let, let, let's put all your data set in there you know interesting, and, uh, interesting. Uh, three yeah yeah no, i think that that that's great so get a trial run and and, and then and then uh, use one of the frameworks yeah. so now uh, i think uh, and again, I'm I'm taking slight detour, um, and I think because because you piqued my interest around TensorFlow and MXNet and 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 yeah. um, Kiras. What are some of like which one is your favorite and which one which and why and which one is the least favorite and why? Yeah, probably TensorFlow. I like a uh, number of users are approaching fifty thousand on GitHub, which is the highest uh, ever. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, you know, uh, even more than Linux. It, this is happening so fast, uh, exponential, very steep. Um, so that's one reason the popularity. Second reason, Google's behind it, and they have very good engineers, and people yeah. do respect them for that. Okay. Um, um, and the third reason is that you know, looking at uh, at these myself, evaluating, looking at the code and the examples. You know, TensorFlow is good. It's got good documentation. Yeah, lots of reasons. Okay. Uh, Amazon is they have good engineers too, so that's not really a differentiator. Why not use MXNet? Well, you can actually. It's it has it has. There's always pros and cons. Uh, and then CNTK is Microsoft. They have good engineers, and so you know why don't I use my? You know, it, it depends really. Okay, and and you know rather than get into each and every, there's probably twelve metrics on each one, and you could draw. A, uh, a matrix, right? All, all the all the open source on on the Y and, and twelve metrics on the X, and you, you'd have checks in the boxes, and, and, and yeah, They're almost three dimensional. Then you'd have the application as well dimension. So it's complicated. Interesting. You have to know your stuff, and that that's where the experts come in and, and make their money, right? Right. So now, uh, which one is your least favorite, and why? Oh boy, probably the older ones. Uh, I don't know. You know, they they they're all they've all been good in their time. Like Theano, uh, Cafe were, were very good in their time because they're kind of the only one, only game in town. But now they've been very quickly superseded. When Google announced in November uh, 20, 2015, right, that they're open sourcing their basically their artificial neural network. You know, their the world changed as far as I'm concerned because then everybody. Right. 
had to open source theirs. And so that that really was a big bang. That's a beautiful that. thing. That's a beautiful so thing. I, suddenly, I piano didn't wasn't as competitive anymore. I'm not saying it's bad. It just it just wasn't as competitive. But you know, so it, there's never been a bad software package. It's just they get superseded quite quickly. Interesting. Interesting. So now. Um, now let's talk about let's let's talk about the industry as such. I think you you peak you peak my interest around when you talk about these frameworks and and I think you actually is a very interesting point mm. that most of these vendors now they just came up and they open sourced it to compete with sort of um, yep. uh, TensorFlow. So I think that's a beautiful thing. Mm. So what are some of the nice things you are observing in the industry uh, regarding the adoption of AI? Uh, so if yeah. you can shed some light on that. Yeah, well, uh, for example, it's been very good. It's uh, made everything nice and competitive and everything out in the open. So, you know, MXNet, they keep upgrading. Uh, CNTK, the Microsoft one, they went from, to, they just released version two a couple of months ago with a heck of a lot more features than they ever would have if, if Google hadn't have open source TensorFlow. So they've all been, everyone has been forced to A, work on it very quickly and B, open source it very quickly too. So not everyone just adopts TensorFlow. So if you look at the GitHub, I think MXNet has got over 10,000. Uh, you know, TensorFlow is a clear leader, 50,000, 10,000, CNTK, 10,000, which is quite phenomenal, really. It's like so people aren't just all going for TensorFlow. OK, they, they are, right. you know, they're, 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 they are using the other frameworks as well, whether that's a side by side comparison or we're just going to use it because it's better for our data set. We're not sure. But so, yeah, the, the, it, it, competition is always a good thing. And, it really does move the field uh, quicker. Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. So now, um, now let's talk about people a bit. So, I yeah. have heard about there's a keyword called AI, mm -hmm. and I have I have heard that they have been getting industry's best salaries out there. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in getting myself into AI. So what are some of the two to three things you would suggest or you would advise me uh, to get me started? Yeah. So again. I, you know, if you're the CTO, CIO, chief data officer, even CEO in a company or, you know, the, uh, you know, lead architect and you've heard about AI and you know that you're going to be left behind, you need to start reading up on this stuff. And there's a whole bunch of stuff on the internet, YouTube, uh, beautiful tech tutorials that people have, you know, a love of labor, just put it out there for people, okay? As the internet, you know, can't be under underestimated the impact that the internet is having on all of this technology development. So that's the platform. People are putting high quality training out there for it. There's no excuse, okay? It's very easy to learn. Uh, not so many books out there, it's too new, right? It's just moving mm -hmm. so quick and it's too new. Uh, Stanford is open source, same with MIT and Princeton, all the great universities of the world. Uh, Oxford as well have a great course on uh, neural networks, you know, by, by the top researcher in the world. Same with Stanford, you know, they offer CNNs and RNNs, two separate courses. Uh, you know, it's just incredible. I mean, this stuff wouldn't have happened 10 years ago, but today... No, I think, I think yes, you, you are actually uh, uh, raising a very good point that these good, so there are, there are a lot of good MOOCs out there. Yeah. I think definitely um, well said that um, guys should check that out. Yeah, uh, yeah, just go for it, start. Yeah, just dive in, that's the main thing, yeah. Interesting, interesting. So now, um, now let's talk about. So, so you said if I'm a business, I should go. I should go and check it out. Yeah. Uh, now let's. Now let's talk about build versus buy versus. Like, what are some of your thoughts on? Also, if suppose, I have no freaking clue what AI is, yeah. and I've heard and I I've seen the impact. Okay. What are some of the things you would suggest for me that should I acquire an AI talent or should I build and grow an AI talent? Yeah, so that's a great question. So really, you want to, you know, say, let's just use TensorFlow as an example. Get get your team of architects, you know. So I made a transition. I was a systems engineer for Google, IBM as a consultant. I've made a transition myself over to AI deep learning. So it can be done if, if you're a techie kind of minded person and your curiosity will be driving you anyway. I can't imagine there's any CIOs who haven't, you know, done some MOOC or something, right? Because that's why you're in the business. You, you, you know, you love it because of that. And so the second reason is that it's commercial. You, you, you want your company to succeed, to be competitive, and to win even, right? So those two are very strong drivers. So you're just going to basically, so let's say TensorFlow, uh, I've done some reading. I'm a CIO, a curious guy. I, I want my business to succeed. I've seen my competitors already trialing it. I, okay, so I'm going to download TensorFlow on my laptop, get some data, get a data set, 
and, and try it out, okay? And then and then get my team up to speed and three or four of us and myself will, will, will do a little proof of concept. And then if it works, we'll get the business, we'll show our results to business and, and give them a business taste, right? And if it gets sign off, we'll scale it, okay? Um, now that's us doing it internally. The other re- way we could do it is mm-hmm. go get an Accenture or my company or somebody out there consulting to come in and do it for us. Okay, that's going to be a little more expensive, and at the end, you might not. If something goes wrong, you know, it's not a. You'll have to keep paying the money, right? So ultimately, you want to gain this knowledge and do it yourself. How you get there is, is you either go to an outside consulting company or, or you do it yourself. Probably you might. I don't know. You know, some people, I, some engineers are very, very clever, and I know they could do it themselves. Others, it's not their core competence. You know, they're Walmart. They make they, they sell products. They're not a t- you know, or, or you know, a small online retail company with you know a single owner. You know, they, they're not a techie person. They want to serve people. That that's what gives them great joy and pleasure. Not so much the technical side. They're going to have to get outside help. That's it. interesting. I think that's that's a that's a very well said, and a very very valid point. Yeah. So uh, one thing that that we hear a lot uh, from from many of our clients mm-hmm. is the concern that the market is crowded. Mm-hmm. So they are like almost every. So one uh, I think one executive put it the best. He said, "Vishal, you know what? Everyone is trying to sell us. No one is trying to tell us, right? So that's the problem." Okay. So now uh, in that scenario, like, what are some of some of the some of the ideas suggestions that you can give? To a bunch of these executives, like if I'm recruiting an, uh, a consulting firm or if I'm recruiting, say, our contractors or whatever, mm-hmm. what are some of the things that I should keep in mind um, or what are some of the hacks or some of the tips or tri- tricks mm. that you would suggest that these executives should know so they can hire uh, the best consulting team for their, for their job? Yeah, so part of this is being able to sell, right? Being a good, you know, part of being a good leader, a consultant is be, the ability to sell, basically. And, and not just sell BS, but, you know, you know, it's got to be real. So, you know, that's one of the things, you know, I've in a past life, my physics, I used to be a teacher, right? So I could teach people new ideas, concepts, and the math and everything behind it. It's no different. I just get in there in front of the executive. I think this is a wonderful opportunity for me to help improve the world, basically, right? Because we're putting, we're driving stuff forward, uh, automating, making everything more efficient. So I believe in my cause, okay? That's the number one thing. You know, I have the vision, I have the belief, and this is a good thing. It's the right thing for humanity. It's the right thing for business, okay? Uh, the te- it's inevitable that technological unemployment will be worked out, okay? The, so let's do the best we, we can. Um, so from there, then you just, you, it's a matter of selling in the technology. Here, here's a neural network, here's what it looks like, here's the architecture, layers, nodes, uh, here's TensorFlow, here's another one, uh, here, here's your data set, let, and here's how, here's your value proposition. That's it. Right. Yeah. So, <coughs> so I think, let me put it this way. So if suppose, um, say you are the business, right? And you want to hire a consulting firm to help your business. Yeah. So, what are like some of two or three sort of things, or what are some of the things that you would consider mm-hmm. uh, when hiring a consulting firm to help you? So, what are some of the three, two to three things that you would consider as, as an executive to yeah. hire for a for your company? Yeah. Okay. So, budget first. Okay. If if you if your budget's good, if you're a bigger company, then you go for quality, right? You say, okay, the Accentures, the McKinseys. You know, the Booz Allen Hamiltons, the Deloitte, you know, people with very strong reputations that they're not strong for, they're strong for a reason. They've been around 100 years or 50 years and, you know, they built that reputation. Reputation. If, so it's like buying a car. I've got money so I can go get a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini, right? Uh, actually, my, I'm budget limited. So I'm going I want, to, I want the Lamborghini and the Rolls Royce. So I'm going to get a company that I can have faith in. But it, I can't afford Accenture right now. You know, in the future, I, I will be that, you know, everybody wants to succeed. But right now, you know, so maybe that's where I would come in. Uh, you know, I don't charge the $300 an hour that Accenture might or however much they, you know, I, I don't want to boil this down to that. But it's like, okay, uh, you know, I, I think I can actually do a better job maybe than Accenture as well. So, 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 you are, so, so you are suggesting that budget is a concern. So mm-hmm. budget is one concern that you would consider when, when hiring a consulting firm yeah. or a contracting firm. What are some of the some of the other consideration that you think um, yeah. that someone would ec- think about when hiring a firm? Yeah, so quality, that, definitely the quality, quality factor too. Okay, so so yeah, not every, you know, if people, 
uh, the budget and the quality are kind of matched, aren't they? If you've got unlimited budget, you probably should go for the best quality. There's no real reason not to. But if so, how do so is is there any is there any um, kind of um, um, reputation index uh, or, or is there anything out there that uh, suppose if how would I know if your firm is any good or better than say Accenture? Yeah. Or how like are there are like what are some of some of the tools that I would know? Yeah. That uh, for this particular job for a, for an industry like mine, yeah, yeah, a, a boutique firm like yours, vis a vis yeah. of Accenture, like what? Yeah. Uh, what are some of? Is there anything out there that I can I can look for or? Not really. So reputation is uh, your re- yeah. You should do your due, due diligence. Absolutely. Yeah. I encourage that. Hundred percent. So so um, basically, you're looking at reputation, aren't, aren't you? Really. So uh, reputation is built over time. Okay. So. The a boutique firm firm might be newer, so it's slightly more risky, I guess. But so you do your research, you talk to the people, pick up the phone, talk to people, look at the website, pick up the phone, have meetings with the people. Maybe four or five firms, <laughs> maybe you know two or three big ones and two or three small boutiques, and then make your decision. Right? I think that's the way people do anything: buying a car, hiring a consultant. So it's no different there. Uh, but yeah. Interesting. Boutique firms might have more deeper knowledge than some of the bigger guys. Actually, that's my, my sure. Yep, I think that makes sense. So now let's let's talk about. Um, uh, we'll dig dig a bit further into talent. Mm. So now not not really consulting firms. So suppose if you want to hire your next hire mm-hmm. in in your consulting firm, mm-hmm. an AI talent. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you would look for in that candidate, and what are some of the things that you would not look for in a yeah. candidate? So I would see them, yeah, yeah, technically, first of all, you know, you, you got to know your staff. Um, if it, you know, if it's a technical role, if it's a more of a product manager role, it'd be selling ability and presentation skills more. But uh, for technical roles, yeah, you got to know, you have to have some hands on 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 some of the frameworks like MXNet, TensorFlow, and uh, demonstrable hands on, mm-hmm. maybe a GitHub uh, account, for example, with some neural network work uh, we're, we're on display. Okay. And, and it's you know not just from yesterday, but from six to twelve months ago. Um, so yeah, maybe you've worked in a in a company already, a startup or or a major company, and you're looking for your next move. So it's all demonstrable, and then you know just the interviewing process itself. You, you can normally tell it's just a new technology. Again, same process, just different technology. Yeah. So so you're suggesting that um, they should have some hands on on uh, on the frameworks that are out there today. Yep. And they should be able to demonstrate sort of um, their comfort uh, level in in these platforms. Yeah. Because I think you 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 may not. So I think that's that's another question. So how different are these frameworks from each other? So if I say Note TensorFlow. Yeah. Is it? Do I know Keras or MXNet? Like do I do I know other platforms yes. or like how 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 different how di- uh, how polar are these platforms from each other? Yeah. yeah, that's that's a great question. So yes and no. So the underlying technology, the the layers and the nodes and in, in the uh, optimization algorithms, uh, the, there's regularization, there's dropout. There's all these uh, <laughs> techniques and methodologies that people in the industry know and know about. Okay, so how TensorFlow implements that or MXNet or CNTK, it's going to be in there. Okay, it's going to be three lines of code. Which will be slightly different in each, uh, you know, framework. Okay, but it, it's more important to know about the optimization algorithm. It's more important to know about the algorithms, in fact, each to be honest. Okay, and then the coding is, oh, it might be done in Python. Uh, Torch, well, it's going to be done in Lua. C plus plus, it's TensorFlow. It's going to be done in Python. Uh, MXNet can do it in R and Julia and Python and C plus plus. It has the most uh, of the different languages you can do. That's one reason people choose MXNet actually. So the language as a programmer yourself, we know we can pick up Python or C++ or Ruby if we have to. So it's more a deep understanding of the algorithms and being able to understand why I would use this algorithm. Interesting. <coughs> I think uh, valid point. So now I think so now let's let's spend a few minutes on chatbots. I yeah. Think that's 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 a massive craze nowadays. I think it's uh, almost like uh, I would say about half of the companies that I hear about nowadays in AI. They are doing some of the other version of chatbot. Yeah. So how is how real or unreal is this phenomena, and if you can shed some light on that? Yeah, that absolutely. So chatbots are NLP. Remember, they're recurrent neural networks. So that's straight into the technical side of things. So, uh, yeah. So chatbots for me, NLP uh, images. So language. If we as 
what makes us unique as humans, one of the major things is our understanding of language, okay? So chatbots are going to be, it. they are the killer app. There's no doubt about this, okay, in my mind. Because if you understand language, you have human level intelligence. You can plan, you can reason, you can communicate and talk intelligently, okay? So when Siri, I can ask Siri, you know, what time's the next bus? Where can I order a pizza? What's on at the movies? Um, tell me about the meaning of life. What, what, you know, what, what, tell me the plot, subplot of Macbeth, etc. cetera, in, in, to understand, right? Not just go out to Wikipedia, cut, cut and paste, but to understand. And, and that's the point we're actually at right now. So yeah, chatbots, they are the, they are AI, right? That's interesting. And, and what's, to your perspective, like what's next? Like what, what is, so five years, what, what would be your prophecy for say, one year down the line, five year and 10 year down the line? It's, what about some of three things that you would anticipate, anticipate seeing in next year, in next five year, and in, in, in next 10 years? Okay, yeah, great question. So yeah, brave new world, <laughs> utopia, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> nothing less, nothing less, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, unless it all goes wrong, I see a world in 10 years time where, you know, automation <laughs> is 50% of, uh, you know, people are out of work and, and enjoying their lives much, much more than they are now doing jobs. They're not particularly, you know, and thinking that, oh, yeah, I used to, looking back and laughing quaintly to themselves, oh, I used to derive meaning out of that job, you know, and, uh, you know, there's a lot more to life than that. So that that's the vision. That's utopia. That's where we want. Okay, there's dystopia. Most of the science fiction movies, Terminator, are all about, you know, the bad effects. Oh, they're going to go rogue and turn on us. Okay, we'll leave that to one side. I have a Facebook group called AI Safety, which looks into uh, research work. Uh, uh, Stuart Russell at Berkeley has just written a book, um, Do the Right Thing, just published on Amazon. I just found out about it today, in fact, and I put it straight on my AI Safety. Uh, nice, book. nice. Now, he wrote the, the book on artificial intelligence, mine, okay? Him and Peter Norvig at Google uh, wrote the book on artificial intelligence, A Modern Approach, which everybody uses, okay? So it's no small matter. He's just published this book on AI safety, okay? Trying to downplay all the doomsaying bits that we get from movies and kind of gets ingrained here as kids, and it's kind of hard to remove, okay? He's like, okay, so, you know, here are the theoretical limits on AI. This is what they can do. This is what they certainly cannot do. So don't, you know, don't be afraid because... There are limits on this stuff, okay? There are limits. Uh, I'm a physicist by training. The laws of physics constrain stuff, okay? Things are constrained. They just don't go, you know. So, yeah, th this is a bit of a problem right now, the, the fear of the unknown, okay? So, 10 years, I want to see utopia. Uh, I want to see basic income. I want to see people get deriving more meaning out of their life than just going to empty jobs, okay? Uh, these jo capitalism has definitely got us to where we are. I'm not anti-capitalist. I'm pro but, you know, I'm also pro-reality uh, as well. Things are changing. Uh, let, let's embrace the change. Let's embrace the change. <coughs> Interesting. So I think one area that I, I definitely want to t touch slightly on before we, we part ways, I think um, I would love to know your perspective on some of the use cases in, why, in which AI sucks. Whoa. Some of the use cases in which AI is not efficient. Oh, none really, none, no. Because what the big picture here, I think that you're missing is that uh, these artificial, they're, they're basically replacing our neural networks. They're not replacing us as human beings, okay? But they're replacing uh, our neural networks, okay? And that's not scary. For me, that's a good thing because we, we'll be able to free up and do stuff, creative stuff, okay? So. That's basically, so nothing sucks, okay? Uh, you know, we had Jeopardy, uh, we had the uh, chess, we had Jeopardy, we had Go, and now we're having them beating poker, okay? Carnegie Mellon recently beating poker. One by one, they're beating us at everything, Vishal. So, so don't ever think that, oh, they suck, they're never gonna work. It's just not true, okay? Uh, things fail, right? Experimentation, you know, taking risks. Uh, you know, people who take risks, um, do so because they have to, okay? Richard Branson, uh, Larry Page, you know, Bill Gates, they have to, entrepreneur Steve Jobs, he didn't have to do the iPhone, but he, he had to, he, you know, something in him had to do that, okay? It's the same with AI, you know? They, we can't stop it, the researchers, they got, the mistakes are gonna happen, but so what? In any, any technique. No, but I think, I think, so, I think you raise a very good point, so, so, um, I th one area that you suggested was okay. So now AI is taking away three, so that we get more time to do arts. Yeah. 
So now for something like art, do you think AI can can do art? Yeah, that's a great point. <clears throat> okay, so the the bit I skimmed over was that we we are still going to be here as humans. Us, we're whole. Yeah. You know, we have a certain amount of intelligence. There are eight, nine different types of intelligence. There's uh, IQ, there's rational with uh, math. Okay, logic. That's one. That but only one. There's eight more. There's creativity. You just mentioned painting, yeah. music, writing. Okay, there's language. There's uh, social interaction. There, there's uh, introspection. Right. That, that's a form of intelligence, understanding ourselves, understanding our environment, understanding others. Those are three types of intelligence. Um, there are others as well. There's commercial business intelligence. You know, we're not all Bill Gates. OK, I, I haven't got 90 billion because he's better at it than I am. OK, and you have to admit it. Einstein was better at physics than I am. OK, so there's all these different types of intelligence. We will still be us with our we're starting to understand by developing AI and getting thrashed at chess and go and being humbled completely, right, by these AI neural networks that, yeah, it's, we're limited now. We, we used to be the center of the universe. Galileo displays that. It's like, oh, wait, no, we go around the sun through careful observation. And then, you know, slowly but slowly, our egos have been brought down to size. It's like, you know what? We're, we're the best that biology can do is intelligence on this planet, but there's probably many other planets out there. OK, as a physicist, again, cosmology is a big part of my right. <clears throat> well, I think that's that's a that's a very good point. And, and um, you were, yeah, I think last month I was talking to one of one of the executives um, and, and the conversation went into this idea of. So this, this is this is my theory mm. of what's happening. Right. So I, I'll give you a quick bit. Yeah. So I was I was I was pitching this guy. There are two things. There's art of doing business. Yeah. And there's there's science of doing business, right? Yeah. So science and art working together makes a business. Yeah. Right. So my pitch to them was that the computational part yeah. is the science. Science is predictable, yeah. right? Science science is formulative. Science is something that you, that sort of can. So, but the art, art is you. Art is a bunch of people working together to create an outcome, right? Wow. Those those phenomena. It's it's a very sort of non-calculative, uh, very qualitative phenomena yeah. in, in, in many aspects. Yeah. So the discussion went into the, the side of that. If So the technology like AI, right? They push the limit. So they say they are doing such a beautiful job at science. Mm. Somehow we are confusing them with art, right? So now, mm. uh, imagine uh, a business that says, okay, I will do less and less art mm. because science to me is almost like an art, mm. right? And then with the next upgrade, your entire core competency washed away, right? Because your com core competency is based out of uh, a, a partly of art and a partly of science. Mm -hmm. So what's what's your um, thinking or what's 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 your thought on right. uh, on that phenomenon? Yeah. OK, so where we're at now is we've kind of solved all these narrow intelligence. We we've, we've beat chess. We beat Go. We, we do a lot. We've image classified images more accurately than the human being can. Amazingly. OK, it's taken most people by storm, including Sergey Brin, who said, I never saw this coming. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Guy, right. You know, uh, so, yeah, if it can take him by surprise, it can take everyone by surprise, I guess. But um, it's taken me by surprise. It's happened very quickly. And Google DeepMind in London has 350 top PhDs in yeah, physics and neuroscience and computer science and language. That's, that's, I think that's a fascinating. It, so <clears throat> uh, thank you so much again, Peter. I think before we part off, I would love to have you have a closing statement on that. So Yeah, OK, OK. Um, yeah, so let me just go back to AGI then. So yeah, the, the key goal now is to develop general intelligence, which which have the what you mentioned and all of the ones I mentioned. Introspect, ability to introspect itself, uh, ability to communicate, understand other people, emotional intelligence. It, there's, a really, there's people that are working at MIT on exactly that. Um, and so this general intelligence is not solved. We, we have bits and pieces we need to either come up with a more underlying theory of intelligence and under, which might come from understanding how the brain works more in other words through observation mm -hmm. fmri exactly how the neurons all work the different types of neurons and then replicate that which is a little bit what artificial neural networks do they're, they're, they're you know replicating the uh basically uh how the biological neuron uh does it integrate and fire actually um so that's where we're at. We, we're very good at certain types of tasks, and we want to make it general. We want, we, I, we want um, an iPhone that can, uh, a AI that can drive a car, um, talk to you emotionally, intelligently, understand, just like having a passenger beside us. Okay, we want to 
build that, but it'll be smarter, faster, and quicker, okay? Science fiction, no, not really. We've had so many developments that we can forget about science fiction. It's going to happen. Whether it's 5, 10, we don't know exactly. And it will keep improving on the S curve. Ray Kurzweil talks about the singularity is near, right? That's, that's when we do get AI, AGI. Uh, so that's it. That's the goal. That's what I get out of bed in the morning for is to push that nice. forward and <clears throat> companies and then just keep putting in the latest uh, algorithms and TensorFlow, okay, and other you know, <laughs> learning frameworks. But ultimately, uh, you know, the bits are being added to make them more general. Uh, so, and, and so that's exciting and, and that keeps me going. We're, just, they call this the fourth industrial revolution. I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you so much, Peter. I think it couldn't have been said any better. So, uh, and again, uh, I do too, truly appreciate you sh you, sh you sharing your wisdom. Right. I think a couple of things that, that we learned from the conversation is uh, study. It's Everything is out there. Yeah. There are good courses if you want to equip yourself what's going on. If you need to hire some consulting, look, uh, do some due diligence on them. Yeah. And, and definitely there's thanks to a very vibrant open source community. Almost every framework out there is blessed with a lot of support and there's no sort of clear winner they all are sort of do playing their, their their clear role i think that that is really really helpful to know yeah and and definitely we um, we wish you all the luck with the, with your consulting firm yeah thank you. and love to probably have you back um, sometime and share your story and success and failures yeah and share with our audience and 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 good luck and thank you so much thank for you your time for having me yeah it's been fun it's been great awesome uh, I thought I was sick of home, but actually I was homesick Never really knew that I would have to grow up so quick I'm so uncomfortable, don't know anybody here Just a couple dudes that I met once, that's it And I go into the booth feeling nervous Got butterflies in my stomach like I'm so worthless Is the mic gone? I don't know how to work this Inside I'm breaking down, I hope I'm not up on the